Alright, hey everyone. I'm going to be doing a follow-up to the video I did a few weeks back on the AMD FX versus Intel Core i5 uh, for gaming in CPU bound games, particularly MMOs, because they're usually the ones that uh, really show CPU as a bottleneck. So I got Guild Wars 2 here again as the example. The reason why I'm doing this video is to clear up some confusion that a lot of people, uh, I, I got a lot of comments from people posting like I didn't show Intel's graphics settings or uh, I appeared to be biased or something like that. That's, uh, so I want to get the record straight. Uh, I prefer AMD. I always have. The CPU that I had before this one, well, okay, technically Intel was, the Core i5-3570K was the previous CPU that I had prior to changing over to the 8350 as seen here. I still have the Intel by the way. Uh, in the last video I showed that I have two systems. Um, you may have noticed that they have swapped places. The Intel is now over there with the dual monitors whereas the AMD is now over here. That's because AMD is now my main computer. Uh, last time I did the video, I was in the process of transitioning all my data over to AMD. So now, basically I use this AMD computer for, I could do live streaming on Twitch, or I just do gaming, and if I want to record, like, PS3 gameplay, I just stream it off of there. I've got, a uh, Avermedia Live Gamer HD installed, and all kinds of other stuff. Different capture cards and stuff. Also, I want to point out, the reason why I did that is because the AMD motherboards are cheaper and you can get motherboards that have like multiple x16 PCIe lanes so when you install like a capture card it doesn't it doesn't cause your graphics card to drop to like a x8 speed so as seen here this is GPU Z on the AMD so just to clear things up there's the this is the FX8350 so let me let me boot into the game cuz uh it's idling right now so there we go so it jumps up to the turbo to 4.1 gigahertz uh, everything's stock uh, RAM is you got 16 gigs of whoops 16 gigs of memory running at 1600 megahertz on the regular uh, nine timings uh, somebody pointed out and this is actually a very good comment that uh, AMD does well with uh, high frequency RAM and and tighter timings and that's very true and I actually plan to uh, to change the RAM to 1866 in the future I want to get some of that AMD memory the 1.5 volt RAM I recommend if you're going to higher speed RAM to start out with 1.5 volt RAM do not get any of the older 1.65 volt RAM uh, I heard that there's some issues with that especially when it comes to running the higher speeds so get 1.5 volt RAM 1866 because it's officially supported uh, by AMD for this processor whereas Intel on the other hand can only only officially supports 1600 megahertz if you want to do higher than that technically that's an overclock so that's like outside of warranty and stuff like that so got the game booted up here in Lion's Arch now um, I just wanted to show the hardware so the GPU the GPU is a 7850 you can see right there it's running at x16 speed PCIe 2.0 the temperature on the graphics card is 63C it is it is the the overclock edition card so it's running a little bit faster than stock I think stock is like 800 something megahertz 860 or 840 this one's running at 920 and 1250 on the memory so you can see that the graphics card is not being bottlenecked right there the activity is 96 percent in lion's arch so it's it's almost it's not maxed out but it's close um, and let me just get some frame rates here uh, so we're standing around the middle of lion's arch doing nothing and we're at like 43 so a little bit over 40 fps and as I move around, it'll drop a little bit. But yeah, the changing the memory or, or actually running at like 1866 will probably uh, it won't really improve average frame rates, but it will improve frame latency. Like as I move the mouse around real fast, 
the frame rate drops and then recovers. The one big difference that I noticed is that the Intel recovers faster and that's because the memory latency is lower. Uh, but that doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to be always getting higher frame rates on the Intel. Because honestly, when you're playing, you really don't really notice that much of a difference. They basically are the same. So I don't know where people got the idea that was saying that uh, I was favoring Intel. So as you can see, uh, let me just go ahead and show the graphics card settings, or the graphic settings. So I'm running Windows mode, so I have access to my second monitor. But uh, this is a 1080p monitor, so full screen is 1080p. As you can see, everything is on high. Reflections is turned off. Uh, I, I noticed that all it does is eat up frames, and I don't really see any improvement in the visual quality. And then I have render sampling native, because there's no reason to run it super sampled for 1080p. And then vertical sync is disabled just so I can break 60 FPS. But yeah, it's like, it's totally playable. Now, when you do world vs. world, and you've got tons of people fighting each other on the screen, uh, the FPS will drop lower than Lion's Arch, anywhere from 10 to 20. So if you're doing 50, you're going to be seeing like 30 at the worst points, sometimes even lower, more like 20 in uh, World vs. World. But it's definitely, it's okay, and it's not like that all the time. Uh, those are only like worst case scenarios. So definitely I would recommend the FX 8350 uh, as AMD's top of the line CPU. It's a, it's a pretty solid contender as a gaming CPU. It's my main CPU of use for usage now. So uh, that's the AMD. And there's the cores there. It looks like ArenaNet in one of the previous, and I have noticed that the frame rate's a little bit smoother now across the board. Uh, they do utilize a fifth core now. You can see one, two, three, four, and then this one is doing stuff now. So it looks like they've, they're, they've optimized it a little bit so it actually uses two cores in the first module. This is module one, module two, module three, and module four. So that's the AMD. Let me just make sure I covered everything here. Uh, yeah, I think I got all that. So if we switch over to the Intel desktop, see here, um, it's a quad core. There's no hyper threading or any other cores. And, uh, oh, the graphics card settings are exactly the same. It's boosted up. So let me log into the game on this one. You'll see the activity shoot up on the graphics card in a little bit. And then the RAM, here we're actually only, I only have 8 gigs of RAM in this computer. Since AMD is my main, it's got 16 gigs and this one's only got 8. But the RAM amount doesn't make that a whole bunch of difference. Going from 8 to 16. And uh, the graphics card is running at X16 on PCIe 3. 3.0 because Intel does, Ivy Bridge does support that. Uh, although I will point out that the Ivy Bridge is, or socket 1155 is a dead socket as of 2013 now because Haswell is going to launch. So if you want to upgrade to Intel's latest and greatest later this year, unfortunately you will have to buy a new motherboard. There's no other way around it, otherwise you're just going to be stuck with this CPU. Um, so, okay, so we're in Lion's Arch. Let me just pull up the frame right here. Now, I wonder if I... I don't know if I loaded into an overflow or not, but, uh... So, let me uh, zoom in a little bit. Oh, and I'll, I'll cover the settings here. Graphic settings are exactly the same. It's running Windows full screen. This resolution monitor is actually... 1920 by 1200 so it's actually higher resolution slightly than AMD's 1080 uh, main reason why I'm running the 1080 monitors on my main is because uh, for streaming purposes and also for like recording PS3 and stuff like that it's just it's better to be consistent and then oh yeah it was in the overflow okay uh, so again native sampling on Intel and reflections on none vertical sync is turned off so it's the same settings on both computers. I wouldn't change them around. It wouldn't make any sense. Um, so let me keep this open. 
And you can see it dropping down 40. Um, yeah, let me just run around a little bit. I don't think I need to show open world because open world I showed it last time and it's it's above 60 on both. So there's no point. They're identical at that point. Um, but yeah, it's it's a little bit better. It can hit 60, which is fine. I mean, it's great, right? But uh, I think as the game matures uh, with, the, with the newer builds, it'll become more optimized across the board. Uh, I can already see improvements on the AMD platform with this game. Uh, but yeah, there you go. See, it's dropping down. So I would say it's still, it feels slightly, because you can see it's getting, well, actually, no, it's about the same. They're pretty much the same now. So I would say for gaming purposes and for more future-proof uh, CPU, I would recommend the AMD over the Intel. Primarily because Haswell's coming out, this CPU is going to go into life, and uh, yeah, you basically you're stuck with if you buy an ivy bridge you're basically stuck with it and you don't really have any other options whereas if you get the fx 8350 you actually have the option to go to steamroller whenever that rolls out probably either later probably at the end of this year probably early next year a year from now who knows um but yeah i recommend the 8350 primarily because it has eight cores and in certain scenarios it is superior to the i5 because of multi-threaded and i think multi-threaded is the future so uh hope you guys hope it's cleared out cleared up any sort of confusion uh that you had based on my previous video uh hope you guys enjoyed the video hopefully it was informative and uh, thanks for watching so uh let me know what you thought in the comments and if you want to see any other benchmarks let me know maybe i'll do them i got some requests for plant side too I don't know if I'll do that or not. I already have Planet Side 2 installed, and honestly, the frame rates are identical on both platforms, so I don't really see the point. Um, but yeah, as always, rate, comment, subscribe. Thanks.